Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's never-ending beard brigade. Talk to the beard. That's what this show is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Solo. You're not. You know all that shit. So, yeah, we're here live in my room at GRL once again. And you all, I don't need to give this man any introductions, but I'm going to. Kurt fucking Graves. Look at that. Hey, Hi, buddy. John. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. You were one of the, like, I thought I was going to be the only narrator here. Um, and, and then somebody said Drew, uh, Drew Gibson's here, which I didn't know that one. I'm like, cool, too. And then Kurt. And I was like, well, fuck nay. Yeah. So we've come a long way. Can well, you believe it? You're all the way in my <laughs> hotel room now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you remember a couple of years ago, my first GRL? And yeah. And I was like freaking out and geeking out and like fanboying because I got to meet Kurt Graves. And Still very silly. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, <laughs> what's okay. a big deal? What? Yeah. Dude, you're a big was deal. Was that your impression of me? Just uh, then? If I said yes, would you be offended? <laughs> <laughs> I don't love it, John. <laughs> I don't do great voices. <laughs> no, we've come a long way, though. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've kind of become comfortable in my own skin a little bit. Um, so I'm actually able to, like, not geek out. And, I, dude, I could actually, like, I got you on my cell phone. I can, like, yeah. message you. And I can message Kurt Grays at any time. It's fucking awesome. So, so you are not staying in a hotel this time? No, I'm an Airbnb guy. That sounds nice. Keeps it cheap. Well, it sounds nice too. Yeah. You get like your own kitchenette and all that shit. Mm -hmm. How many people yeah. are with you? Uh, there's four of us actually all together. Holy shit. So I now in Green Bay, the author Maz Maddox mm -hmm. moved there during the pandemic. So now I have like a GRL author who shares my office with me on a daily basis. <laughs> That's awesome. So so she's with me and uh, her her emotional support friend came from <laughs> Texas to join her. And then this I could be hard. But... I, and then I, I brought I brought with me a new narrator who I've been mentoring from Green Bay who's here to to meet authors. So and... it's Silas, right? Yep. It's Silas. So you guys can, mm -hmm. you can't see on the camera, but Silas is back. We'll bring him up on here eventually. But um you say you're training a new narrator. So. Training is a strong word. I would say mentoring. 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 All right. Yes. I get it. You know, trying to guide him so he misses more of the potholes that I hit. I've heard this song. It's like, and teacher, yeah. there are things. Yeah. Right? That song? Yeah. Okay. I so, you know, but training, <laughs> that, I don't know. That we... It's weird because how many... This used to happen to me all the time, and now it's just because of the pandemic, so I don't go out as much. But uh, you're an audiobook narrator? People uh -huh. always used to say I had a great voice. I'd love to do that. How do you get into it? Right. That question, right? Yes. Um, I've only ever had that work out well, actually, a few times. Yeah, I, I mean, I ran Falcon Sound, so I, we had a few guys come through. But It is an element of the work. Yeah. So being pleasant sounding <laughs> is, a, is it advantage. helps. It, it helps. But it's, it's not all the work. No, not by any means. Silas uh, happens to have a great sort of like deep manly voice. That was my impression of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so way better. So like he, yeah. So like uh, he has that going for him. But the the reason I found him is he was doing a live read at a local bookstore uh, just to promote an upcoming book festival that was happening. Okay. Um, and he just had a very natural sense of storytelling and timing and pace. And so you know. Well, now Out of the blue, you, you like sometimes you can walk up to somebody and be like, "Have you ever considered doing right. this?" Because if you had, you have the facility for it. And it just so happened on this one occasion, he said, "Yes, I've always thought about doing that. I wouldn't hmm. even know how to get started." And it was like, "Well, if you're serious, we can have a conversation." Yeah. And then he followed up, and then you here we are a couple of years later, where he's he's done a couple of books now, and he's here to meet more people. And that's freaking awesome. It's exciting. I wish that I would have hit a convention like this early on, and in my career because i didn't i worked in a bubble for yeah. seven years eight years something like that by the way somebody on the facebook i keep on looking over here because i see the comments oh i cried when i met him so they're talking about you kurt oh you who is you. it uh that's emma anderson oh of course hi emma she, she cried when she met you then the next person said "Ooh, fresh blood so <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah see there you go well let me tell you he he has experienced a degree of that already this weekend uh the grl fandom has already sharpened their teeth yeah <laughs> you hear like an actual cougar sound sometimes when you walk through that room it's like, that thing going 
I shouldn't. Uh, I, I wish that I would have uh, – working in a bubble was fantastic. I mean mm-hmm. I got to actually learn a bit about the craft and all that fun stuff, but it took a hell of a lot longer. I wish I would have come and met you and Greg and a few of these other guys like early on and been exposed – not that way, but been exposed to the the readers and the listeners and other authors. And mm-hmm. that I hadn't, I've told you my story. I didn't really know anybody was even, it, I didn't know a lot of people were doing this already. And I also didn't know that uh, narrators have fans. Right. Um, I didn't get that. Watching you walk through a GRL, even this one's a little smaller. It's fun watching somebody like you walk through because you don't see it, but I see it watching like heads turn. You know, oh. um, and even like a lot of these people, this is a smaller GRL this year because of the fucking pandemic. But we like uh, most of these people have already met you. Mm-hmm. We, we're seeing a lot of familiar faces, but even those are like, there's Kurt, there's Kurt, you know. And um, you think that's because I'm a narrator and not just because I'm incredibly good looking? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to be. I mean, well, <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> so speaking of, of that, I hear last night you were a little saucy. <laughs> I, I heard you had a good time. Never. I. <laughs> no, we had a great time. I uh yeah I we uh I I, I went and, and I wanted you on last night. I was trying to get like a jump start on the talk to the beards, and you explained to me that you you'd invite. I'd already started drinking. Yeah, <laughs> you'd like, I'm, a not, bit. I'm not going on the internet when I've already started drinking. See, if I would have learned that lesson early on in my life, yeah, that would have solved so many problems. But isn't it good that the internet like wasn't what it is now yeah when we were younger well yeah you had to you know dial up and you, you know the mm-hmm. that sound jane still has that that's <laughs> 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 what for for everybody at home one of the one of the jane stops in the background and she has the slowest internet i've ever seen in my life um she allots it all to me it's fantastic oh. it's a nice thing um yeah, I heard you had a great time last night, which was we awesome. Did. And you are better at that than me. I have a hard time with these conventions. It's amazingly enough, I have a hard time mingling. I don't know how you do it. No, I, I get that. I think to a certain degree, many of us are introverts naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not natural at all for me to do it either. Last night was different because I was in a group of people who I had known from years prior. Yeah, And so like by your third GRL, which is what this is now for me, with mm-hmm. a nice long break in between two and three... Um, it's it's a little bit easier to walk into the room and be like, you, I know you. We've talked before. Mm-hmm. First conversations are really tough. Trying to manage the expectations of a reader who's really emotional about meeting you or really excited to meet you, that feels like a lot. Mm-hmm. When it's somebody who you can consider a friend because you've actually sat down and talked to them and you know a little bit about their life and you can say, like, how are the kids? How is your husband? Like, how is the trip here from where you live? I know where you live. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that's a little easier. And so that's the situation that was last night. Um, I'm sure there are several people you could talk to here who will be like, that Kurt Graves was uncomfortable when I met him. <laughs> Because I was, because it's hard to meet somebody new and and try to meet those expectations of who you are in a book versus who you are well, yeah. in real life. I like being able to lock in on, like right now, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking you in the eyes, I can talk to you, I can lock in, it's but so I feel lovely. like, thank you very much, mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I, I, I work out. I, <laughs> no, I... I, I, in a room full of, let's say 50 people, 75 people, a hundred people, when I'm talking to somebody and then I hear my name in the background or somebody else mm-hmm. walks up and then I feel like I can't devote my attention fully to that one conversation before I have to move on. Then I feel yeah. like a prick. And then I wonder afterwards, you know, Hey, why don't I not very good at that? I'm not very good at managing it yet. Um, the other thing is, and I'm going to go back to this because I don't know if you experienced this or not. I didn't know the people who knew I was mm-hmm. at all. Right. I just didn't fucking know. Did that happen to you? Did you walk into your first GRL, your first con, and and just have no idea? Then people started walking up to you and calling you, like, they know who you are already? Yeah, I mean, there was a, certainly a fair number of people who who knew who I was. I think... TJ Clune, reading motherfucker. Right. People knew who you were. Well, and, and so my first GRL was the last one that TJ went to. Mm-hmm. So it, I, I actually didn't have many people approaching me until I was standing next to him. <laughs> So it was de- there was definitely the TJ effect. Yeah. Like there was this gravity yeah. that people were drawn to him. And then they're like, oh, oh, you. Like you make sense now next to him. But before that, nobody was. In fact, I that was back when like narrators had their own tables. And I had done a whole session before TJ had even showed up. And like nobody came to my table. <laughs> my name was on the front of the fucking table. And like no, <laughs> nobody's coming up and saying hi. But then like the second I'm standing next to TJ, it's like, you're Kurt Graves? And I was like... Yeah, that's what. <laughs> this, 
<laughs> this thing around my neck has said that for 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> but <clears throat> that's that's the way it works sometimes. And and I do think sometimes there's uh, that tunnel vision. Like if there's the person you want to meet, mm -hmm. you see them first. And sure. then I was like, oh, oh, oh. So that, that was my first experience. It's like, I really got ignored. Or, and this is probably a more generous interpretation, people were just as nervous as I was, and they didn't want to bother me. I'm told that that happens a lot, and I guess I understand it. Like, with you and with Greg at the last convention, I was incredibly nervous to be to you two, so mm -hmm. I get it entirely. In fact, I, um, you were a bit easier to... Uh, access because when i first saw you we were all going to be in a room together doing our narrator thing right but greg i saw walk in and it was really hard for me to approach him because he was talking to other people and i finally said fuck it and it was like the biggest moment of overcoming fear just to walk up and, <laughs> and it's not that big of a deal and i didn't know it then but i i do now um we were talking earlier about some of the uh uh live streaming um and i know that you are on discord and you have your own channel from time um, to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you do something different, and this might be an awkward conversation. You can shut me down, and it won't be weird at all with this crowd of people in the room and the cameras. But That's fine. Um, you, I read sex scenes live, mm -hmm. right? It's, um, and I've, I've discussed this in great detail in my group, so they're well aware that it just doesn't – how would you put it? I don't get randy when I'm reading these sex scenes. It right. just doesn't do it for me. Um, and it just doesn't. I have a couple times, um, but even then I'm just so accustomed to working in front of a crowd. That's what I do. I've seen you and several other narrators. I'm in a sex scene. I'm cutting. Um, is that, and again, this is where you can tap out. Now, mm -hmm. You don't have to answer this. Okay. Is it because you're getting horny or is it because you are, <laughs> or is it because you're just uncomfortable in general, to, you know, with that kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Why do you do it? I just want to sit in this moment for a second <laughs> where you just looked me in the eye and asked if it's because I get horny. <laughs> so this is different from two years ago, John. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. You wouldn't have asked me that. <laughs> this is good. This is growth. This right. is progress. I'm trying. Um, By the way, this is what you get learning from the master. Right? I'm just telling you, Silas, so you know. <laughs> um, so I have actually narrated sex scenes on Discord. I okay. just didn't know they were. Like, it sort of, like, slipped my mind that, like, all right, moving into chapter 14, and then five minutes in, it's like, oh, that's right. <laughs> well, here we go. Right. Um, when I have the choice to, I have been, like, I'm going to go off off cam for this, like, mm -hmm. um, just because it's more comfortable now for me. I want to clarify. Do you go off cam or, and just turn off the camera? Off, keep... off, okay, off, so off you're, live. you're tapping yeah, off. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. go off live. Um, just because it is... Uh, the, there's it is not because i'm horny okay all right i don't know let me answer the question directly <laughs> thank you very no. much <laughs> um as wonderful as the writing is he was horny as wonderful as the writing is and as great as the characters are and like all of the it is work i am working <laughs> right and there's really no way to turn that off and there's i still believe that if you're at work you need to well, there's a lot keep going it in on. your pants I mean, so i cameras don't that's not why i'm turning the camera right. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm turning it off because there's a i don't know yeah. it's i mean those stories if they're if they're especially if they're well written the sex scenes mm -hmm. aren't just sexy they're also very intimate uh -huh. and when that intimacy is taking place there's a part of me that just feels that that should be private and so it doesn't feel right to broadcast it, by the way, which is ridiculous because well, it's you, all fake. You just melted like every freaking person's heart, including mine. Oh, good. Uh, by the way, that's it's just I don't want to touch it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were having a moment. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> no, that's that's amazing. That's the greatest fucking God damn you. I keep on learning. That's a great answer. Uh, I wish I would have thought of it. No, it, it, <laughs> you can steal it. The the you don't have to. <laughs> you, are, you are dead on accurate. The intimacy part of it, mm -hmm. and I've read, I've read a lot of books at this point in mm -hmm. my career, and some of them are, are so well written that I can't believe that I'm getting paid to do this shit. Right. Others, I mean, they're not. <clears throat> um, and working my way through those sex scenes is an entirely different deal. It is, and like, and and that. I think the ones that have snuck up on me have been more like that. The mm -hmm. They're just like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. And that, yeah, that doesn't feel as private. Yeah. Uh, but it's just the, the, the reaction of the characters and you're finding mm -hmm. it easier to act through those moments. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm by myself. Good character choice. Yeah. And great answer. I'm kind of jealous. 
Um, <laughs> going back to you are in Wisconsin and Mads mm -hmm. is now in Wisconsin and now you're sharing, is this the same office that you were on talk to the beard a year or two back and, and I saw that. No, space. sadly, I loved that space. It was it a really cool. beautiful old building right in downtown Green Bay and it was so fucking loud. Yeah. And there was just too much traffic. There was a bridge right outside that would go up and down with boats coming up and down the Fox River and it That's was just like, loud, I bet. it was like, oh, we can't. We couldn't, we couldn't stay. It, yeah. There was just too much going on downtown. And um, so I, I looked for a different space and now I'm in a much quieter space. And so it, it's, okay. it's worked out well. I have this beautiful three office suite that's tucked away on the backside of a building, far away from the road, mm -hmm. on the ground floor. Like the only thing that ever disturbs me is the garbage trucks that go in the back alley. And Literally everything also, else yeah. does not penetrate those concrete walls. And then I have my booth on top of that. That's so perfect. It's perfect. The only thing that messes me up is uh, if something inside the building, mm -hmm. like one day I walked in and the, the fire alarm was just blaring. You can't work. Through and that. I, no, I really, <laughs> <laughs> Tantor wouldn't have liked that. Yeah. So <laughs> like, are, are you with Maz? Are, like is Maz writing something? And then you're just like, Oh, is she like, you can't do this now? Or I mean, how's that relationship work? I mean, cause you're working she, on some mad stuff, right? She just kind of comes and works there. Cause she still has a day job okay. and is working remotely. So okay. it's just a place for her to get out of the house, which I understand. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's part of why I have an office outside my home too. It was also a noise issue at my house. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just, that. I just didn't love working from home. I um, had, so I had to get out. I, I get it. I've debated and it she, seriously. And she has to get out. <laughs> so, and I was like, well, I happen to have a right, space. Right, space. So. I've debated that seriously. I love my wife to death. But mm -hmm. there are times when, my, now I have a detached building, but I'll take a break. I yeah. Mean, you know, you got to go. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I'm going to, and then we're into a conversation. And the next thing you know, I'm like, well, I guess I'm done working mm -hmm. for the day. Or I'm just not in the right headspace right. when I go back to the booth. And there is that advantage I'm jealous of. I, I'm jealous of yours because I think my next step will be what you're doing, which is to be at home, but separate. The detached Which I do size. think is the is the most correct answer. I mean, there's always going to be distractions. There's always going to be things that, mm -hmm. that knock you out of the narrating space. But I think that would be great to still be able to have no commute, but it's totally separate. It, you're not walking past your bedroom or the laundry hamper just yeah. to go to the bathroom. I couldn't Where it's that. like, oh, okay, well, I could just quick make the bed. Or right. I could quick, I could, I can throw some laundry in or like, oh, I'll just wash the dishes real quick. It's like, you got to be separate. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the other side, like a lot of times when I was at home and I wasn't working, I felt bad about the fact that I wasn't working. Yeah. And so that work-life balance was not, not healthy for me. I didn't figure it out. I, like I said, ideally my next move is an office that's in a house, but it's separate. Uh, I have to leave. I have to leave if I'm going to, that's one of the reasons I got into the jeeping thing um, mm -hmm. was because I cannot not work when I'm at home. That's all I think right. about. It's all I do. I love it to death. So unless I'm going to a meeting or I'm going jeeping somewhere, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty much working. I'm doing right. something. I have a hard time with that. You mentioned. You got to though. Cause like, well, you will, you will work yourself into a bad place. How long, you, how long have you been narrating now? Eight years, nine years, 10 years. No. I thought you had 2016. My first book we've, came we've out. October. So before, it'll be, it, it's like next week will be five years since my first book came out. Yeah. See, and this shows what a slow learner I am, right? Because I'm at my first book was 2012 or 2013. And I'm learning shit off of you a lot. Of well, shit. I'm learning <laughs> shit off other people all the time. Too. <clears throat> it's, it's amazing. Um, Oh, speaking of which, before I forget, I got to tell you, you did a fantastic bang up job on that Jeff Adams thing. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank I, you. I, I means a lot the, coming from you. Well, I only listened to the sample, mm. um, but a couple of my friends. Uh, you didn't buy the whole audiobook to listen to the me redo your work? <laughs> I had to hear the sex scenes and he wouldn't do them on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, um, yeah, I'm proud of you for doing that. And I kind of feel I'm not responsible, right? So I'm not taking the credit for this, but, um, uh, he, he had asked me about doing some work at back mm -hmm. at the GRL and I did not think I was appropriate for that project to begin with when I took it on. And you are the best YA voice that I know of in the industry right now, especially oh, in, in this particular YA MM romance. Like you're it, <laughs> you're the one. In fact, I hope there are casting agents out there listening somewhere. Yeah. Cause they all listen to John fucking yes, solo. Yeah. That's. 
I, no, it, it's eerily like I feel like I should like. Is this legal to be listening to Kurt do this? Like because it's you kind of sound a little like jailbait to me sometimes when you do this kind of thing. You're really good at it. I oh, like it a lot. That's the sweetest thing you've ever said to Thank me, John. Solo. I looked you in the eyes when I did yeah, it too. It was really good. Uh, but you, you, <laughs> from the sample that I heard, you were so much better than me at that role, and I'm so grateful that Jeff got because it's a cool series. It's a great yeah. concept. Um, what is it? Codename Winger. Codename Winger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm grateful that you gave your blessing because we wouldn't have moved forward if you had felt strongly. That, Absolutely. Like, fucking Lula. I, I'm not okay with erasing that. <laughs> well, because it's a tough position to be in. Like, yeah. Well, you did the work, and it was out there. Well, but... and that whole DSP thing, and all mm -hmm. that too, and we all know how that went down. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I didn't know that Maya was getting pulled down. I thought you were continuing on, but mm -hmm. I was totally down. And I think I can't remember if somebody asked me or not. It probably somebody did, okay. and I just don't remember. But so I, I was I was totally I was totally down <laughs> with what happened. It was yeah. perfect. Uh, it's you were so much better for it. Uh, and I like Jeff. He's a fucking mm -hmm. good dude, um, and he deserved to have a good piece like that put out. So good job. Well, and I'm I love doing YA. Like you're not perfect. not exclusively, but like I do enjoy it. You're perfect, for and it, I feel man. I feel good about it. So. Yeah, you nail that down. I'm glad. Yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I said something about that because I cannot. Now I have done YA, and there are certain situations where I do well with it, but I cannot, I cannot nail it like you can. Um, I can't. I have like two YA voices. Mm -hmm. You know those those sub genres you get into where you can, uh, like I've got voice. Give me a cowboy book. I got voices until <laughs> the cows come home. Literally, like I can keep on going. There's always more. I can hear that. Yeah, but, it's yeah, never a problem. YA. I got like three, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny though. And I, I think we as narrators work ourselves into these corners that don't really exist. Um, because like, do you ever, do you know Johnny Heller? Yeah. He does tons of middle grade and YA and he sounds like a <laughs> he sounds 60 like old, year old smoker, yeah, like an old you know, like his voice is as, is as raspy as men's voices can get. Yeah. Um, and yet somehow it works because it's in the spirit of his performance and it is really has nothing to do with his, his vocal facility. And I do the exact same thing where I like, I'll, I'll be doing a, 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 a male romance book that calls for like a really like masculine dude and i'll think like oh i really got to change my voice for this and it's like it took me a long time to realize like no you don't like your voice <laughs> registers as male and mm -hmm. that's the point <laughs> and and when authors lean into words like deep or gruff or low mm -hmm. that they don't mean literally down here for the whole book like we don't have to we don't have to christian bale batman a 10 hour Audiobook. I've done that voice too. <laughs> I have too. I've, I've, and I've ruined yeah. my voice oh, for yeah. a good chunk of time by trying to, to achieve what I thought somebody was looking for from a performance. Um, and it's probably only within the last twenty books that I finally just said I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I send in my first fifteen and they say, actually, could you make your voice lower? I will say, respectfully, no, because yeah. I can't. Like, no, this is the voice I have. Um, and there's there's a certain amount of magic that happens when you're in the booth and you're close to the mic mm -hmm. and you can make yourself sound a little more gravitas. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that that can't be achieved just like in an open room like this. Um but yeah, respectfully, like if the book calls for a voice that I'm not comfortable doing, then That's no perfect. thank you. But also like I, my voice has a lot more facility than I originally gave it credit for. Mm -hmm. Um and it was quite the surprise when like I stopped doing what I thought people were looking for and like nobody clocked it. Nobody came back like, oh, why isn't he doing this voice like he used to? Like That's amazing to me. Because right? it wasn't about the voice. Yeah. It was about the storytelling. It was about the characters. And and, and so much of it is about the writing, which is nothing to do with what we do. Mm -hmm. Like that's the hardest thing sometimes in the booth to just remind myself is like, just do the work. Just read the words because that's that's what a lot of people are here for. Um, and I, I've coached with, with Andy Arndt, who's one of the big names in the oh. industry an Audi winner. And, you know, and, and one of the first things she said to me is like, people know you're reading them a book. Like, stop thinking you have to make trick them into thinking this is a multicast staged performance. Hmm. People know you're reading them a book. That's an amazing piece of advice. Right? Yeah. Like, Oh Yeah. Give the audience enough credit to know that they know what they got themselves into. They know it's one person reading them a book, and I don't have to provide. Sure, I don't have to provide it all. The author has provided it. <laughs> well, I've, 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 
I ran into that trap early on in my career and slowly over the course, James Foster was the one that helped me. I, I heard that dude do firefly with like two voices mm -hmm. and it was amazing. Yeah. It was really good. It was impressive. Um, and he, he's the one that taught me that it, it, it act, act the, the character and the emotion, not the voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and that made a huge difference in my career. And to be honest, I've never heard anyone complain when I started, and I do character voices. It's one of my strengths. I do them, but not to the extent that I was. Now, another thing that I paid attention to with choices was first-person narration choices that I make. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what I say yes to and no to, because I do feel bad. Let's say I take on a 10-book series, and it's all dual POV, flipping back and forth. And I feel responsible for creating, hopefully, let's say at least 20 unique voices that I then have to act in. When I've been in those scenarios, first off, I say no to a lot more than I used mm -hmm. to. I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. But the second thing is when I do say yes to a scenario where that's going to happen, I'm, I'm just a lot closer on the voices than I used yeah. to be. I'm not trying to kill myself to make them as unique acting the character in the scene. Um, although dude, the way Andy put it to you is fucking brilliant <laughs> because you're right. Yeah. I mean, I had a really funny thing. Was it Andy Arndt? There was, I think it was on discord. Uh, it was when I was first starting on discord. Um, so I, I get on and I'm on my, I'm so excited about this court. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is the coolest thing, man. There's actors in yeah. all these rooms. And it was like right at the beginning hop of this, right? at COVID. And I was so excited. So anyways, I'm on break. I got my phone and I'm on discord now. And it's Andy fucking art in a discord room in the nook. And I was like, oh my God, that's mm -hmm. cool as shit. Yeah. And I jump in and my microphone's on on my phone. And I oh, no. <laughs> can't figure out how to turn it off on my phone for the life of me. And I'm the only other person in that room. It was, it was so bad. Yeah. And I still have not run into her again to say, I'm so sorry. I'm a moron. I was just so embarrassed, you know, it's, I'm sure she's, she's a understood. legend, yeah. <laughs> but she is, but then like you meet her or you work with her right? and it's like, Oh, human. That's right. We're all just human beings. Yeah. And like we, uh, were famous in very, very, very small circles. <laughs> well, you know, like Andy aren't can go to the grocery store. Yeah, and we, like sometimes I have to remind myself of that. Like, well, yeah, that's I. I always tell my my family because they, th my family thinks you know those those memes you see where mm -hmm. this is what your family thinks you do and this is mm -hmm. what you really do. My family thinks I'm a freaking like famous. Like, no, there's how did a, you convince them of that? I'm a liar. I, my <laughs> quite a few of them there, and and I'm like, you know, I'm really big with about two thousand people. <laughs> but you know they know me really well that's about it see my uh, family has no idea what i do they're still wondering why like how like, i make money gonna, doing when you're gonna grow up and get a real job right <laughs> no but, yeah my mom actively encourages people not to read my books <laughs> she was telling me about a family thing she went to recently where my cousin was like oh i really want to support kurt and read his books and she was like no 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 and i was like mom they're not all smutty i was like a good chunk of them aren't at all <laughs> like, they're just romances so i was like you could read you could listen to some of these books my parents have still never listened to a book i've done because they have this vision in their head of how awkward and terrible it would be and i'm like it just reminds mother. me of how i explain this to people what do you do for a living mm -hmm. i'm an actor um you're in columbus ohio what, i'm a voice mm -hmm. actor Oh, voice act. You do commercials and card. No, I do audio books. Oh, I love audio books. I'd love to check you out. What mm -hmm. do you, what do you, I, I narrate a lot of romance. You know, my wife likes romance. And what I'm thinking at mm -hmm. this point finally is, well, your wife probably listens to me. Right. But, mm -hmm. but no, I then have to say, I, I record a lot of gay romance. Yeah. Um, and that's when, because I'm in Columbus, Ohio, a lot of people are like, Oh, oh, oh. Mm. And they back away slowly and they like, you know, turn little Johnny's head away. And yeah, it's, uh, that's mm -hmm. how you have that conversation. So, um, why do you start with actor? Well, now this has been a very interesting change for me uh, mm -hmm. because for years I was a musician and then I was an audio engineer. And when I joined the actors union, I kind of started to identify as, I mean, Harrison Ford is my fucking union brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I, I kind of started to identify as I'm an actor. Oh, anybody who's ever recorded an audiobook, mm -hmm. my colleague. Yeah. It's amazing. Isn't my it? colleague, Audrey McDonald. My colleague, Barack Obama. Yeah. My colleague. <laughs> Barack Obama actually did his own audio book? Yeah. Yeah. That's 33 hours. Did he do that before <laughs> or after his presidency? This, wanna... Well, this one was after. Okay. I was just his, making sure. Yeah. That does not seem like a wise choice. I, I think 33 is an exaggeration. I think it was actually like a 20 hour. 
20, maybe 24, 26 hours. What's the longest one you've done so far? That I've done? Mm -hmm. About 20. It's been about the longest. How long was Whisper? That was about That was yeah. the longest freaking month. Of, yeah. And hard, too. It wasn't an easy one by any means. But, yeah. Those are... Those take... I, I took, like, a few days off and went camping after that one because I needed to get it Good. clear. Because... It, whether the project was hard or not, it was just that long of a stretch mm -hmm. of trying to make it work was very difficult for me. Yeah. Most of them we do are like five or six hours. Well, only recently have I gotten into like standard length ones. <laughs> it seemed for the longest time that like if it wasn't 10 hours, nobody wanted me to do it. Really? Yeah. So yeah, once some of these more like category romances started coming in and they were like six, seven hours, I was like, oh, this is different. Like it totally changed my schedule. Well, I'd finish on a like Thursday morning and I'm like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> the dual narrations. I keep on sliding in a bunch of those. I'm right. not sure how I feel about them, but I, I do a lot of them and I'm still, I'm still kind of on the fence. Um, I would still rather not yeah, do them, not my favorite but that's not an option if you're going to do the work. Yeah. Um, the problem is, I mean, I usually still give myself the full amount of time um, because I'd rather be able to slide something in on the calendar if I can. Mm -hmm. um, but also it takes as much time to prep. Well, I have a really hard time with that because I work my prep differently and I need to change my system for dual narrations because I hire a prepper mm -hmm. and I have the story laid out. I have a good summary. I have each chapter note laid down so I know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is I, I feel completely discombobulated from the story. I don't feel connected a lot of times. So it takes me a lot longer yeah. than it normally would. I, I struggle with that aspect of it. I should probably do my own preps on those. Um, I everybody's process is different. Yeah, I'm just not, do what works. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite happy with him. I, that's it's the it's the disconnectedness of the story itself to mm -hmm. me. You know, I don't feel like I I lived through that previous chapter, so it's really hard for me to hit this one. Um, I still haven't quite made my. I only started doing those a year year and a half ago or mm -hmm. something. I'm still not. I have not found my groove yet. Can you? I, don't know. I haven't found my groove either, and and everyone's different. Even the ones where I've narrated with the same person more than once, it's like the diff the experiences can be totally different yeah. depending on when they schedule, who starts. Like sometimes it's really smooth, and but that usually means one person. I hate to say it, but like the best experiences are when one person does most of the work. Yeah. Because if one person records first and does a really thorough job of saying, here are the voices that I used, mm -hmm. and then the other person can just do their best to match that, yep. that's probably the best result you're going to get. Yep. Trying to do it at the same time is very difficult. Trying to constantly send back back and forth, like, oh, I haven't gotten to that chapter yet, but okay. Like, well, here's a voice I need to know how you're going to do it because you do it 10 times as much as I do, but I'm already ready to go. I've, it's I've like, okay, well, let's this. just keep it. And, like, and sometimes, like, oh, I'm in... Timbuktu. So like, oh no, just keep the voices generic. It, I don't know that this has happened, but it feels like sometimes that's what you get from the other person. Like, oh, I'm just going to use my standard romance voice. Like that wasn't helpful. <laughs> I cannot I haven't listened yet. to your books, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you think I know what your standard romance voice is. I can't thank you enough for having this conversation. Like there's so few of us, you yeah. know, <laughs> that actually understand that, that w some of the little nuances of what happens in our career. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of which, so you, you you brought some fresh new blood, and I want yeah. to make sure that we actually put him uh, like in the chair and on the microphone real quick, just so okay. people can see. In your what, chair or my chair? Well, your chair. Oh. Well, wait, no, actually, no, no, wait, 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 no, that's a better idea. That's a better idea. No, 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 Kurt, no, 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 I mean, no, no. You no, can no. interview him if you want. That'd no, 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 no. You're, you're going to meet him. I just, I had to be snarky. A snark, a snarky. Here ass. I go. Here All I right. go. There you go. Now I'm doing Kurt's voice. Here we go. <laughs> Take it, take have it. a seat. Jesus Christ, you do have a deep voice. Uh, we gotta work those things, right? Hi. <laughs> Hi, man. Welcome. So your first GRL. It's been insane, uh, obviously. Like, I, yeah. I, I love it. I've had so much fun. We're only two days in, and I'm excited for the rest of the, like, three days. So It gets crazy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, with that voice, they're going to eat you up, son. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> you hear all that. It's been a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing. One, don't go in rooms with anybody by yourself. All right. We know all this stuff, right? All those rules. Um, what, what book did you narrate already? Um, 
Oh, goodness. Um, I've done about five so far. Um, my most recent one has been a YA novel, um, How to Be Remy Cameron, um, by the amazing Julian Winters. Um, and he's like a pretty up and coming author uh, and such a nice person as well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually doing a um, co narration, speaking of that uh, earlier, with Kurt as well. And that is the, um, what's the one? Weavers of uh, Weavers Circle. Weavers Circle. Okay. I'm very bad at names. <laughs> Word, words are hard, dude. <laughs> I know, and I'm trying to do it. For exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you don't need to be that good at it. <laughs> um, so five books in. Uh, it, all right, I'm assuming at this point you got a day job. You're doing something else for a living. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Um, is there any plans of doing this full time? Any plans of? I want the jump? to. Um, it's been very fast i mean i am only a year into this and it's been quite a process um mm -hmm. but it's been so helpful having kurt um kind of help me avoid a lot of the mistakes that i definitely knew that i would have made like he has helped me so much just with every little process i could think of mm -hmm. so. well there's a lot to it there's yeah there's not only the acting that's kind of important i think mm -hmm. um but there's also the equipment and then there's the technical skills of running not only equipment but the software um then there's the uh obtaining work uh, mm -hmm. which is one of the trickiest parts in the beginning for sure um yeah, it's definitely helped me with that <laughs> yeah and then there's actually learning how to execute the work using all the technical knowledge you just learned from getting all the gear that was way too expensive and then learning how to run the gear and the software which is tricky to say the least um yeah, and then when you finally get all that technical as a aspect stuff down, then you sit down, and then you still got to remember to actually act. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and then finally, now you've got it all down. You're acting, and you're in front of the mic, and now you have to deliver in a certain time frame, and then make it profitable. So yeah, it is a lot. And you know, I've been told it's like, oh, you have a fantastic voice. You should be in radio. You should do this. And it's like, well, yeah, but how? Yeah, like like I've always wanted to, but yeah, I mean, like you said, there's it's not just the voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much more to it. I mean, let me tell you a little secret that I learned, and I've not been at this that long, and I'm honestly not that good at it, and I'm not being humble here. <laughs> I'm just not. If I keep on if I keep on practicing, I might be. But let me tell you a little secret for somebody like me, and for like him, and maybe like you, I don't know. Um, there's no better fucking career in the world. This is the best fun I've ever had in my life. Oh, I've had um, a blast. Yeah, it's a yeah. ton of fun. Um, but the stick to itness that it takes to get from point A to point Z, where you're where you're doing it and you're actually doing the deal and you're making a full time living, is not easy. Uh, it sucks. Uh, it really does. So good luck with it. The good news is you're young. You got a fantastic voice, which really doesn't amount to a hill of beans at the end of the day. But it's going to help you. It helps. I wish I had that fucking thing going on. <laughs> Mine was a lot harder to make work. Um, so you got all that. Plus you got a great teacher. I think. Yeah. All right. And that's been the yeah. biggest part of that for sure. So what's the what's the full narrating name that you're working under? What's uh, Silas name? Whitaker? Cool. Mm -hmm. What's your address? Um, just don't don't fucking do. <laughs> Where's the wire? <laughs> well, Silas, um, we already talked to her for a half hour, so we're done with him. We're gonna go out with you. Um, and what I do is, and this is complicated now, right? Okay. So what I do is, I, I tell you to wave to the camera, and then I hit this button, and we say bye. So you wave to the camera. Have fun, y'all. <laughs> I will see you. Uh, what's the next one we got coming up? Uh, Eight o'clock is Ashland Mills. Ashland Mills. So see y'all then, fucks. Have fun. Good luck, and thanks, Kurt. Mm -hmm.